Hey everyone, great to see you all. Great to see so many people that are on this webinar, excited to get started. Um, now, today's topic is going to be the importance of adding goal fitness to our teaching toolbox. Uh, we have a few of us that were with last week, um, and for you that haven't really maybe been part of webinars before, I mean, we're all, I mean, this, this whole concept of digital meetings isn't very new, but if you're a little bit new to this whole concept of webinars, then I'll give you a little bit of tips for the day. Um, fortunately, you can hear us, you can see us and so forth, but we won't be able to see and hear you. So feel free to use the chat. You can ask questions throughout the whole session. It could be anything around the presentation, around fitness. We also have our a great guest with us today is going to be sharing some insights. I'm going to be introducing him very soon. Um, Related to social media, if you want to share what we're doing today, if you want to add some photos, feel free to tag us, connect a coach. That's always great. Um, I can see here that we've got Jim with us. And last time, Jim actually did say a couple of words. So I'll be inviting you in here, Jim, if you don't mind, if you want to say a couple of words before we get started. So let's see if Jim's going to join us here in just a few seconds. If not, we'll just continue going. All right, so we'll see if he's going to join us. Otherwise, when it comes to today's yeah. lineup, we have the honors of welcoming Henrik Swart with us. He's a really, really interesting profile in many ways, known him for many years. Uh, Henrik, welcome. It's so great to have you on board. Thanks, Chris, and hi, everyone. It's always a pleasure to be invited to do these webinar sessions with with chris um my name is henrik swart i am a uh, a teaching professional from sweden i work pretty closely with both the swedish pga as a teacher within the swedish training program and with the swedish national team so my side of of this is that i'm i'm working with i'm integrating golf hey, fitness henrik, can you into switch your switch your sound are you sure yeah, switch your sound. Just go back and forth. Let's see. Is is this better? Yeah, it's a little bit better. Yeah, let's go like yeah. that. Okay. Sorry, okay. sorry about that, guys. Um, no worries. My 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 side of this is that I I've been working for so long with integrating fitness, golf fitness within my own teaching, and being able to share that and share my experience with with you guys is hopefully going to make you see the whole bigger picture of integrating golf fitness into your own teaching toolboxes. Now, uh, from my end of the story, my name is Chris Manson. I've uh, been a golf fitness professional for so many years, working with all types of golfers, all types of levels. And uh, over the later years, I mean, developed and created a platform called Connexit. And what we do is we're incredibly passionate about integrating technique, fitness, and equipment. Uh, we know that equipment has done so well on the whole manufacturing side of things. We know that technique, we're all really, really good pros. Uh, but at the end of the day, a backdoor into improving players is how we can help them move better, get stronger, get a little more, more stable. Now, we've had the opportunity and the honors of working with so many professionals, academies and clubs. And what we're seeing is more and more professionals are moving towards this integrated area where we're combining teaching equipment and fitness. And with that, when we look at fitness today, it, it, you can see it maybe on, on two sides. One side, you can see it, it's really positive, like just looking at one of these images. And when we talk about it as well, it could also be a little bit negative. I mean, when we, when we associate fitness and golf fitness, we think about strength, we think about gym, we think about, you know, sweating, maybe a, a younger population. But an interesting area here is definitely related to maybe a, a population of, of seniors, <laughs> older golfers, etc. Here we've got a lot of potential to help them move better, get better, and so forth. We know that golf puts a lot of strain on us, and we've just seen as little as 15 minutes, three times per week, working on kind of the right stuff, we can see so much impact. Everything from improved distance by increasing range of motion, 
uh, increased revenue for the pro because we're adding more tools to their toolbox. And we can even see extended membership careers because we really don't want to lose players due to injury. I mean, we will lose players eventually, but we don't want to lose it due to players, you know, blowing out their back or getting bad knees and so forth. So if we can find ways to help them and get them moving better, then we can at least get rid of these, you know, unnecessary injuries. Now, when it comes to Connexit, we've created a platform specifically for academies, for teaching professionals, for clubs. And what we do is we basically provide a platform where we can provide feedback for the professional. Think of it like a launch monitor. Like a launch monitor tracks ball and club, we're doing it on the player's body. So by doing a couple of different assessments, we'll give a good feedback on what's going on, what needs to be improved. And for the player, they would get drills and exercises and programs so they know what to do and how they can get better. Now, we've worked with a lot of their professionals and we've got great partnerships now with the PGA of Holland, with CPG, the PGA of Denmark, and now even Finland just a couple of weeks ago. So we're really excited about what's moving and how the market is kind of moving towards this holistic approach. Now, today, what I'm hoping we're gonna be able to cover is a little bit of fundamentals around golf fitness, how we can incorporate different assessments. We're going to look at how Hendrik does and how he's been doing it for many, many years. So we can get really inside the ropes of what's going on. We're going to look at some case studies, kind of what's the difference between maybe just doing a, a traditional kind of a teaching approach to more working with the holistic approach, providing technique, fitness, and equipment. And then also if we have time, finding new ways to attract new customers and ensuring that our business really thrives. Um, now, when we talk about making golf fitness a natural part of our whole lesson experience, we like to always bring in this whole concept of you know, working with a whole. And we know that when it comes to the equipment side of things, there's so much we can do. When someone's maybe bought their fifth or sixth custom driver, it's hard to see those really big progressions that we want. And we're all good teachers, but you know, we see it all the time. We can get a little bit frustrated. We want them to get to the top of the backswing, but they just can't. They're just too restricted. They're too stiff. Um, they don't really know what to do here. Now, Henrik, from your perspective, kind of what's your take on, you know, you've been doing, you know, working with this model for a long time. What have been some of the challenges that you see uh, you know, you even teach this for many cases. Uh, what have been some of the challenges when it comes to golf fitness and, and, and teaching pros? Uh, well, well, you can look at it in two different ways. You can either look at it from the teacher's perspective, which is the time factor of actually integrating a, a screening and then making a practice plan and periodizing that, that throughout another time. And the results that you get from working with the body you need to be doing that over such a long time and and mostly what i hear when i talk to colleagues is the fact that okay but i have a, a half an hour lesson i need to solve the slice right now i can't send my client to the gym for for six weeks before we get get to get to the root of the problem so that's that's one thing the other thing is from the student's perspective which is also a challenge getting them to work on their body when they mostly just want to play golf. So you kind of get to a point where, where the students feel like, oh, no, that's only for the better players. That's only for the elite and for the juniors. And you get teachers kind of walking the same path. That's only for the juniors and for the better players. But in all honesty, what I've been seeing and from my experience over the last 10, 15 years working with this is that if I can get them to move better, if I can get them to create a plan as Chris showed before with say 15 minutes a day for three days a week, creating good habits, just getting them to warm up before they start to hit golf balls, then I have a much better opportunity to actually work with, to actually get the technical changes that I want to assess to actually implement them into their game. So that's the main issue is to get over the little hump of the 
general opinion that golf fitness is too advanced, it's only for the professionals, la 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 la. No, I mean, I integrated as, as from, say, five, six years ago, I don't have any part of my academy that is not integrating golf fitness in some form, one or another. So I would say that that is the biggest challenge when you get when you're getting started to actually make a decision for yourself and for your academy that, OK, this is something that I believe in. This is something that I feel is important. And we all know as teachers that if we can get them to move better, if we can get them to coordinate movements in a better way, we can implement technical changes in a much faster rate than other. So I would say that's the biggest part. So from a Connexa perspective, you know, having spent years, you know, learning and years kind of understanding and researching kind of this area, what we've seen is, is the common things that have come up has been a, that professionals for some reason don't feel confident in, in implementing the area of golf fitness, uh, or they feel unsure how to package it. Uh, hey, Henry, can you just mute your mic just for a second? So I'm getting a little bit, um, also, one piece is that it might take a little, it's historically taken a little bit too long. Like if I'm in a lesson uh, and I'm going to do my interview, I'm going to work through the, the technical side, and now I'm going to do a 45 minute screen. It's been like, you know, it, it sounds great, but it's kind of been one of those things that is, is gotten in the way uh, or it's been a little bit too complicated. So these are four areas that we really try to turn around. So making sure that uh, pro that professionals feel confident, they know how to package it, they know how to put it together, something that takes very little time to do. So it's a natural part of it, but not a dominant part of what we're doing in our teaching. And then also something that isn't too complicated to do. It's actually really fairly easy to do once we get the hang of it. So in this case, what we're going to be talking about is like, okay, how can I be doing this in the best possible way? Now, we've broken it down into three steps. So there's three steps to basically including and adding it in a, a, a proper and both think in a successful way. The first step is the assessment. Now, it could be very easy just to give everyone the same drills. Everyone gets the same program. It's kind of like doing club fitting. It would be really easy if we just gave everyone the same specs, everyone the same bag, and just, you know, it's done. But we know that there's so much more to club fitting than just doing that. Same thing when it comes to creating a unique experience for the golfer. We do this with fitness. So by assessing the player, you personalize their experience and you personalize the program. We want to do some kind of feedback. So uh, Henrik's going to be walking us through later on how he kind of walks, how he kind of guides his players through his teaching process. Um, so where the feedback comes in and so forth, I think would be really, really beneficial. And then also, when it comes to it, you know, a lot of professional players, they don't want to wait six weeks, which sometimes it's taken. You know, I see a player today and then I'm so busy. And then I, I, I I'll, you know, for me to create that program, you know, I'll, I'll get back to you in a couple of weeks. But the player wants it now. So a good thing here is we can provide drills right away. So with Connexa, we've, we've got AI where we'll provide drills based on the player's assessment and their limitations and their strengths and so forth. And then we'll get it directly on their phone so that they can go home, start working on it and start improving. Um, so breaking this down, we're gonna go through the first step, which is the assessment. Now there's multiple ways of looking at a golf swing. And, you know, Henrik, from your perspective, when we look at it, you know, this isn't fairly new to a lot of us. But if we just kind of from a teacher's perspective, if we break down, what do we need to do uh, in order to hit that ball? We need a couple of different planes to be working within our body. So maybe you could just kind of take a few minutes and just kind of walk us through that. Yeah, of course. And, and okay, if go you look at this. Go back to your other mic. I just did. Is this, uh, is this one not working? No. Apologize, guys. That's fine. So now, now you're on the other. So now you just got to speak up loud. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> when I look at this picture, I see uh, the, the, the majority of the parts I see here are similarities. 
And there is a debate within the teaching world if we see differences or if we see similarities. And I see, uh, well, the golf club is in three different positions, but I see a lot of similar movements within what they are doing. So what they are doing is that they're moving in three planes of motion. They're moving, rotating, rotating. They're moving forward and backwards. They are flexing and extending and they are tilting. They're moving side to side. And all of these three motions are happening simultaneously during the golf swing. So if we can, because if you look at the Hall of Fame golfers throughout the time, if you look at the golfers in the 50s and in the 70s, the golfers of today, you see the same um, motions happening in their bodies. The golf club is in maybe in a different position, but as they swing the golf club and as they come and move into impact, they are looking pretty much identical. And that is something that we need to assess as coaches. What are the best players in the world doing? Because they are giving the best information in the world to the golf ball. So if one if we want to mimic that with our our golfers in, in at home, we want to get them to move better. And mostly it is a lack of ability to separate the lower and upper body. It could be a limitation within the hip joint, which is one of the most mobile joints that we have in the body, the hip joint. Uh, or it could be that we're not using the thoracic spine the flexing and extending of the thoracic spine as we should. And therefore we're taking mobility and we're trying to make a segment of our body. If you can show the next image, Chris there, uh, we're taking an, a segment of our body that's supposed to be stable. And we are trying to make that part move. So if you look at this picture, you see every other segment in your body is either stable or mobile. And working with mobility in the mobile segments is going to be key to actually get your students to move better and to get them less prone to injury in the long run. Because they all know what a golf swing is supposed to look like because they've seen golf on TV. So they try to mimic that motion. And if they lack ability to move, say, for instance, T-spine or, or hips, they're going to try to make their lumbar spine move their lower back and that is not may that, that's not meant to move that's meant to be a stable part of your back that's going to protect the other parts that are moving and more than often i get clients coming in complaining about lower back pain you all have heard that i guess and the problem the root cause of the problem is by default, never in their lower back. It's either in their T-spine or in their hips that are not moving. Uh, and if we can get them to access and to kind of start increasing mobility in those segments, then we can get them to move a lot better. And then they will be able to support both their stable segments and the golf club in a much, much better way. So from a, a from that perspective, when we look at it, when it comes to connects it, so we look at two main factors when it comes to the screens. We have got one aspect is the different planes. So is a player able to move in these different planes of motion? Uh, and can they integrate these motions? So can they flex forward and backwards? Can they side bend and can they rotate? And then we also look at these different segments. So what's going on in the thoracic spine, the hips, the feet, et cetera. Now, when it comes to Kinexit, we've got a wide range of different screens depending on the situation. So for instance, we might have a single lesson with a senior golfer and we don't have that much time. So in that case, we've got a great screen for this and we call it the express assessment. It takes about five minutes to do. It gives us a great introduction to connect to, to you know, golf fitness and it creates a good understanding. It doesn't give us all the answers in the world, but it just gives us a really good start. Or we might have a lesson package that, we, that we've sold, a pretty fairly big one. 
we've got a serious golfer in front of us, someone who's willing to spend time, resources. They really want to improve their game in all areas. Well, there we might have an immobility screen, which takes a little bit more time to do, but we're collecting a lot more data and we're collecting a lot more information. And it's also going to personalize the programs more. We might have juniors that we're working with. And in this case, we've got our power, upper, lower body. We've got our speed and endurance. Great here for, you know, working with the, those types of players. So depending on the player, the situation, the package, we try to really think around what are the different needs that a pro can have. So breaking it down, what's going on in the body, what's going on in the different segments, we will provide the feedback and we'll provide the player everything they need in order to improve. So to give you a little bit of a taste, we're not gonna be able to go through every test today. If you're interested about it, feel free, we're gonna create some, we've got some forms that you can fill out if you're interested in learning more. We've got to give you some resources. There might even be a chance to do some more webinars. So, you know, this is just a bit of a teaser so you can get an understanding how Connexive works, which I hope is okay. So our express assessment, this is based on five tests. It's no equipment. And the, one of the good thing is you don't have to leave your hitting bay. So we're going to, Henry's going to be guiding us through this a little bit later on, how he would kind of go us through this process. But if we just break down the test, it takes about three minutes to do simple yes and no answers. And here we're basically looking at a few different areas. So the first test that we're looking at is, is the player able to tilt their pelvis? We've got three different types of gratings. We've got a green, which is basically they can do it. We've got yellow, which is they can do it, but they find it difficult or red, they just can't do it. So Henrik's gonna be showing us right now how one of these things could look like. Now, again, we're looking at this tilting process and here, you know, for me, this would definitely be a green uh, kind of an area. If we're looking at yellow, usually that person will be shaking quite a lot or they find it, they can do it, but they're struggling. A red would basically be that they're just shifting their pelvis backwards and forwards. And if we correlate that to the swing, it could be someone who finds it, you know, they might be early extending, or if we look at it, just finding that position of getting into neutral is a key thing to the golf swing. We want to see how they can, you know, find that neutral position. They don't want too much of either or. And some players, they just can't do this. And the thing is, it won't go away of itself. It's something that we can do something about. So this is our first test of express. The second test when it comes to it is the ability for the player to separate their lower body from their upper body. Now, again, we've got three different gradings. We've got green, yellow, and red. Green is that they can do it. There's good rotation on both ends. There's keeping their upper body stable. And there's basically good movement here and good separation. Now, yellow is more that there's quite a significant difference between a left and right or opposite when it comes to rotation. They're rotating more on one side than the other, or you can tell that they're struggling. I always kind of say like the rule of thumb is, is there area here that they can improve? Then it's a yellow. Red, different, some different examples for this could be that there's no separation. Everything's moving at the same time. Or they're just rotating, they're just moving their knees. So if you move to the side, give us a profile, they're just kind of driving their knees back and forth. There's barely any rotation. Or they could be driving their hips side to side or laterally. So there's multiple ways here for red. And again, you would be surprised how many golfers find it very difficult to separate their lower body from their upper body. The third test is the ability for the player to separate their upper body from their lower body. Again, we've got a green here, but there's good rotation on both ends and the player finds this reasonably smooth and they can do it very well. Yellow is on the other hand, someone who can't rotate the same amount on both sides. It's, there's a significant difference between left and right. Red usually is that they have, they, they just find it difficult. They're either moving everything at the same time or they might be just using their arms. There's very little 
kind of rotation or like Henrik showed, there's also very much too much of the side to side bending, so to speak. And again, there's a lot of players out there that find it difficult to do this. The last two tests, one is a toe touch, which basically is can the player touch their toes with straight legs? They do this as well as they possibly can. If they can do this, it's a green. If they can't do it, it's a red. And in this case here, what we're looking at is just overall positioning. If they have a hard time getting into position, then usually their hamstrings and there's their way of, of tilting their pelvis is a tricky area. And then lastly, again, we're looking at the ability for the player to create balance. So can the player stand on one foot for 10 seconds, knees at around 10, uh, 90 degrees, do this on both ends. If you can do this on both ends, it's green. If you can't do it on, if you can do it on one, but not the other, it's red. Or if you can't do it on both, it's red as well. So again, an express assessment gives us lots of great feedback. It doesn't give us all the feedback in the world, but it can give us an, an indication where the player's at. What will happen is, feedback-wise, we'll get a goal fitness handicap. It will give us a great understanding, a symbolic value of a, is the player's handicap, golf handicap, is it, or golf fitness handicap, is it reasonably high in comparison to their golf handicap? Well, then we know we've got an area to improve. Also, it gives a really good foundation for discussion that I can talk about these things that, wow, we've got quite a lot of red here. Um, you know, and in all honesty, you know, it won't go away, but if we can do something about it, there's lots of room for, for improvement. I had a player I was working with only a couple of weeks ago, great handicap, or sorry, great handicap, great golfer, uh, but his golf fitness handicap was, was he had basically read on everything, and he was kind of upset. I was really excited because, you know, what if we can get these things going? Imagine the potential of him really, really improving. So the foundation here is really, really good. Um, when it comes to the mobility assessment, just to give you a little bit of insight, this is a little bit more where we go into depth. Uh, it's seven tests. We're using a measuring tape to be a little bit more accurate. And we're asking how well can the player move away from the wall without losing control. Now, the tests are basically how well can you create your foot mobility? How well can you tilt forwards? How well can you tilt backwards? How well can you side bend? And how well can you rotate? So we're asking for these different dimensions that we've been talking about. And depending on how far you can reach, you'll pull that data into Connexit and the platform will start building the programs depending on they might have an issue with, for instance, creating rotation or they might have an issue by bending forwards, etc. So what we're trying to do here is match their different limitations together with the different programs so we can get a lot more out of their swing. And as I mentioned again, you know, we're just gonna give you a little bit of a tease here. And then if you want more information about the test, happy to go in as deep as you will. Now, when it comes to it, um, we've talked a little bit about the feedback and we've talked about what we can do. Now, when it comes to it, it's really what we wanna create is this approach where at the end of a lesson or at the end of that you know, single lesson, or if it's a lesson package, that you can put things together. So for instance, you might be using a track mat or any type of launch monitor. You might be using video. You might be using, you know, connects it. And once the lesson is complete, well, we're, we're getting to the end and we want to kind of prove our you know, our hypothesis or prove like, okay, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm really, I'm figuring out what, what's going on here. So based on your results from TrackMan, based on your results, what I can see in your, you know, video and your fitness, etc., we can create a really, really unique approach to how we provide feedback to the player. So what we do here is really based on this time, which has been historically a bit of a, a challenge, we've tried to turn around. So from sharing a membership to a player to starting the screen shouldn't take more than 10 seconds. From screening the player to providing feedback, it shouldn't take more than 3 to 12. 
and from feedback to the students starting their training shouldn't take one to two minutes. So this whole process, we can very easily integrate into what we're doing. Now, Henrik, if you wouldn't mind, maybe you can kind of, based on these different kind of cases that I've been kind of talking a little bit about, maybe you can kind of go through your teaching process so we can think a little bit practically how you would guide a player through something like this. So if we start with our first case, we've got a senior golfer, mid handicap, and he's just bought that one lesson. How would you kind of walk us through that? Well, now it's... Is the sound acting up again? Change the other to the other mic. It's, it, 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 go, it comes and goes. It's, it's a little bit more stable. Okay, so we're trying this one now. Is, yeah, is this better. one better? Yes, yes. Yet again, sorry guys. Uh, the wonders of technology. Um, well, when I'm approaching a a new client that, that that has come to me for just a single lesson, I know that I need to assess their fitness level in some way. What I don't have is the luxury of time. So what I need to do is I need to integrate this into a a lesson experience for the client that they may be they're not aware of that the fact that they're being screened. Uh, I've been working with the platform so long, so I can do the express assessment in my head. And if we come to a point within the lesson where I feel like, okay, I've hit rock bottom here. I'm not getting anywhere with this client. I've tried everything in my, in my toolbox when it comes to uh, grip and posture and all of the drills that I have. But I, I, I'm at the point where I need to make the student work on their fitness level. I can do the screening. I, I can input the screening. I can then transfer my focus from golf lesson to, okay, we need to do this. You need to set up a Kinexit account and you need to start working on your mobility. So then I do that within, I mean, it, it, for me, and at that point, it takes me like a minute to set up their account, to input their values from the uh, express assessment because I see that when they are hitting golf balls and then they get a practice they get a little taste of okay if you then now go home we, we've come this far with your technique but I see your your kinematic sequence I'm, I'm not able to change your kinematic sequence okay then we need to start working on mobility or stability for that instance but but if I can then get them to, okay, you need to go home now and you need to start working on this. And then we'll take another lesson in a few weeks and see if you have started to see any type of difference. And then it's more or less a balance act for me as a teacher to, to make sure that the client is on board with the process. But I do need to provide some kind of of first aid plaster to their wound to be able to get them to play a little bit better. Of course, I, I can't I can't say that that the only solution for you is to start working on your fitness level because then I'm going to lose a lot of clients. And believe you me, I've tried that. Uh, so so that's not I, I need to integrate it into the whole lesson environment. It's so much easier if they have bought a lesson package because if they have bought a lesson package, they cannot choose whether or not to be screened because that's what i believe in i believe in that being a, 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 such a core part of the foundation of building a golfer to be able to move their body that if you get a lesson package from me screening is mandatory and it could be the express assessment uh, that's based on client and based on level of interest and also since i work at a at a small club in the south of sweden i know pretty much all my lesson takers which means that i can prioritize that for them i can make the decision on whether to do the express assessment or do the mobility screening if we're in an in-season environment if we are going into winter practice indoor practice where a lot of focus is on physics and and on technique then it's the mobility screening full out all of it, both before we get started and after we're done, to make sure that they have feedback on the whole, the, the entire journey that they've 
taken. But then we're talking about a lesson package, which is over five months in the winter. So say, for instance, that we're changing to this case, the, the middle-aged, a little bit better golfer, which is all often uh, uh, male uh, between 40 and 60, uh, with, uh, who feels like he's pretty good at golf. And he wanted to take a lesson package mostly from, from, from a self-esteem perspective that they want to take a lesson package and they want me to tell them that they're already pretty good. Uh, and for them who has become good golfers in some kind of way, getting them to work on their mobility is going to be like night and day because more often than not, they're not doing anything whatsoever. And if they're going to the gym, they're lifting heavy stuff, which makes them slow. And if they're slow, they can't hit the golf ball as far as they think they should do because they watch golf every week from Thursday to Sunday, seeing the PGA Tour guys hit it very far. Uh, and they feel like, well, I'm going to the gym and I'm pretty strong. I'm lifting heavy stuff, but I'm doing that in a slow tempo. And the golf swing is a fast motion in three planes that you need mobility and you also need pretty good brakes to handle the forces. So then to get them to start working on their fitness side in a way that the professionals do and actually get them to understand what John Rahm and Rory McIlroy and all these guys do, uh, that's the low hanging fruit. That's gonna be what's creating the best results ever. I think your sound there is I'll, I'll take over there for just a little bit and then you can kind of um, uh, re reset your, your sound there again. Well, I think there's really, really good, good input there. And I think the concept of really making it a simplistic approach uh, to kind of break that down very simply is what we see, you know, you have your interview when you work with a player, you go through the kind of the, you, you assess your technique, but from exactly the techniques aspect, and you're on the hitting bay, you can very easily just go ahead and uh, do the assessment by just putting the club on their upper body, doing the, the different drills, and the step from you know technique to fitness is almost to nothing. Now, um, if we go continuing on our process and we look at the improved section, we've talked a little bit now what Henrik mentioned here with some drills and some exercises. Um, the next piece when it comes to it is, you know, what are the different things that we can provide? And here, you know, Connexit really tries to provide a really enhanced and simplistic and user-friendly way to move and do things at home, short 50-minute sessions. Uh, a player can choose very many different types of programs, and it's all very much based on their own personal profile. So you can choose flexibility workouts, stability. You can choose if you want to improve your pelvic tilt or your separation depending on what you want, kind of like using a streaming service, we then want to make sure that they can have a lot of variety. Um, so for pros, it's really creating a, a broad and enhanced teaching toolbox where we've got lots of great technology. And then we want to be a natural part of that for those that want to work with this kind of holistic um, teaching fitness equipment side of things. We've mentioned mobility quite a lot, but the key thing here is creating a really solid foundation of mobility and stability. And we see that a lot of players are lacking this. That's why we prioritize it. And then, of course, we build on to that into more depth, into strength, etc. We've got a little bit over a thousand drills in the platform. The thing is, we can't give a player a thousand exercises, just too much. So the, again, with the AI, it picks out what exercises the player will need to improve, matching their different limitations, making sure that if you have differences in your ability to separate your upper and lower body, we'll provide those things so that the player can move. The actual interface is easy. It's just really building on animations, things that they can you know, relate to. A key thing here is that it is the user friendliness. Now, when we look at some different case studies here, we're moving a little bit away from kind of the teaching we're moving a little bit away from screens etc like how would i integrate a goal fitness component into what i'm doing and again for a lot of professionals there's a lot of interest in going towards this holistic area of training 
And we know that players won't fix their fitness on their own. So we can do something about it. Now for Connexit, it's used by so many different professionals academies and it's used in different ways. Packaging wise, um, we know that if we have on the top layer different, we have our single lessons. We know that we want to fix the problem. Um, and in that case, just making sure that we're, we're tr sticking with that track. But if we have that single lesson approach, then we know that the, being able to add this or like Henrik does, he kind of secretly adds in that, that screen to give them some feedback. When it comes to more of the lesson packaging option, then we know that a lot of it starts with that initial lesson. This is kind of the, the, the baseline testing. You're checking their swing, you're checking their body, you're checking their equipment. They get a goal fitness program to work on during this, this lesson package. They might get drills and exercises they can improve and work on. And then you will have your drills that you will do on the other sessions. Player will have their homework. And at the end of this, you will do some type of an evaluation. Like, how's it been going? Have you improved? And that's also from marketing side, something that you can get better at. And, you know, if you have happy customers that are, are improving and getting better, it will just start you know, creating lots of great momentum. We're seeing this quite a lot where a lot of professionals are shifting from just the whole kind of classic, you know, get a discount when you buy more to creating packages that provide a very, very wide spectrum of things. So we have baseline testing. We've got drills and technique. We've got goal fitness, equipment. We've got follow up. And it could look something like this, like a swing booster that one of our clients has. He starts with a one screening lesson in there. You've got your swing analysis your body screening. He even has a biomechanical area. So his lesson is 75 minutes long in this case, because he adds a lot of good things, but he also has, you know, charges premium for that. He's got three lessons that are included, two types of memberships of connects and coach now. And also, you know, if you're doing one to three people, so it's just an example of how you can kind of be shifting towards a more approach where you're adding more value to your, your total packaging. Now, <clears throat> I'm a little bit unsure, you know, about Henrik's um, stableness when it comes to his intro around seeing him jumping in and out. So, Henrik, if you want to jump in, feel free to do so. Otherwise, I'll be talking a little bit about the way you've kind of packaged things. Um, but as Henrik's been kind of mentioning throughout the, the whole session is it's a natural part of what he does. And we're really honored to be working with him. But in his all different packages, there's a clear way of he describes kind of what a player will be getting when they're working with him and how he's kind of, okay, we start with the assessment. You'll get a, a membership with Kinexit. And then also we've also got different areas where he describes kind of why the body is so important. So it gives a sense for a player to go in and read about it and get good understanding. And all these texts, all these packages are all things that we have on our knowledge center that I'm going to be telling you about. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can get lots of great inspiration of what we currently do with professionals. Other types of, of academies, that just to give you a little bit of say case of, of some case studies here, is Volkswagen Golf Academy, which is in the south part of Sweden, done a great job in creating a very inspirational academy. Here they have different types of packages but there was always an initial screening session where the player will they know that if I go here, I'm going to assess my technique, will assess my body and my equipment. Um, other ways of doing it as well. It's just like, just again, making sure that the player knows that and we're educating them, we're teaching them. This is how you can be, we, we, we do things here. Um, so they know that, okay, you know what? my body is a part of that golf club. It needs to move. And the better I can move it, the better I will play. Now, rounding up the session, I think, you know, we've had the chance to talk around some different areas. It's so great to have Henrik with us. Unfortunately, his interest is a little bit unstable right now. So he might be popping in here for any second. Um, but I would say for give you a little bit of pointers, one would be that, again, the golf fitness is something that, you know, we're very passionate about. It is a real door opener into developing players technique. It won't go away of itself. Do something about it. Uh, you know, we're here to help in many ways. Uh, but, you know, adding it in is something that I think many professionals benefit from. 
uh, every golfer is unique. So I would say that customizing with some type of an assessment instead of just giving them programs is a, a win-win for, for both the player and the pro. And then that adding it into your teaching toolbox is also a way so you can create more revenue. By packaging it like this, we can see you know a, a twofold in the fact that professionals are able to earn more, they can charge more. So it's a win-win all stages around our business. Um, so a little bit more about Kinexit for professionals. Again, we've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different professionals. And for those that are interested, uh, then, you know, there's multiple ways of looking at it. But the key thing is we try to do is we've got different types of plans depending on the size of your academy. So if you're a single coach and you only have a few students, or if you've got a little bit of a bigger setup, you're still on your own, you might have a very large academy with multiple professionals that are working, or you might have a really, really big business with multiple locations. We try to cater for all those areas. So there is a license for all types of professionals. We want to make sure that professionals are certified, that they get activated, they, they feel that sense of, I know how to use it. And with that, we'll go through in our education. We do these online. We can do them on site. Um, there's and, and etc. But the key thing here is that people feel confident how to do it. Um, the certification here is really based on once you kind of get started with the process, the certification is more of a sense of, OK, you know, how do I use this in the best possible way? And this is what we do. We if it's online, we'll set up a, a two to three hour kind of session. We'll go through some fundamental biomechanics. We'll go through the all the different screens. We'll go through some education, how to provide feedback through the platform, go through all the features and so forth. And then we'll spend a significant time in how we're going to integrate it into your business. So, you know, we'll give you examples for packages, different types of, of pieces to, you know, make sure that you can um, use in marketing, all the things that you find you will need, we'll get you covered. And these certifications are different ways we can do it. First of all, we can do it online. We've also got lots of on-demand videos that you can do if you feel like you just want to learn on your own. We're also talking with the PGA of Holland as well with Jimmy. And, you know, depending on the interest, we might even find a particular day uh, or maybe two where we have two locations and we'll be inviting multiple professionals that are interested. And then we'll have a full day together in Holland. So depending on that, we'll, we'll kind of set that up in the best way possible. Um, our knowledge center, as I mentioned before, is that we've provided a resource for our users that, you know, for professional users that use Connexit, where you can get access to a lot of great things. So we've noticed that it's not just important to know things about screening, but it's another piece related to, okay, how do I put things together in my packaging? What can I put on my website? Um, what can I do on my social media? So we've created a resource center so professionals can just go ahead, grab it, use it, and get lots of great inspiration. So we've got things for a website. We've got things for our lesson packages, great things that we've just, you know, brought in and we've talked to a lot of pros and we know that these things really work. Related to our plans, we have different types of plans depending on, again, who the professional is. So our smallest plan is something we call 100 student months. Our biggest plan has 1,200 student months. Well, what is a student month? Now, basically, when you use Connexit, you will have access to certain credits, which we call student months. And these months you can use in multiple different ways. So for instance, if we have a lesson, so let's say that we have a single lesson, like Henry had mentioned before, and in that case, this person hasn't really bought Kinexit or he hasn't bought a program, but there we've got different kind of features where you can create, provide a trial to the user. So they might get a seven day trial. It doesn't deduct from your credits and it's a great way where you can share as many seven day trials as you want with players. Once they feel like, you know what, this was great. How do I continue? Well, that's when you can create a great business model with, you know, Kinexit. So, they might then go from, you know, trying Connexit to, hey, I want to buy Connexit separately. I want to buy it from you. And then you can sell that month or months to that player and you can charge 
depend, you know, whatever you feel like you want to, but we do have recommended prices that we benchmark. Or what Henrik does and many others is they add Kinexit into their lesson package and they then can factor that cost in. So if you sell 35 to 50, you know, lesson packages or less or more, then there's lots of really good ways where you can generate revenue where Kinexit is a part of that revenue creation. So when it comes to the plans, you will have different types of months. And we usually recommend, again, if you're a smaller, maybe, you know, once, you know, pro that's working in a business, don't have that many clients, then 100 months to start with is great. If you might have a little bit of a bigger business, then 300 months is great as well. Um, and then if you're going up to maybe having multiple pros, well, then you've got 600 and 1200 months. But we'll help you understand and we'll, we'll ask questions and we'll guide you through what would be a good start for you. Um, but if you package it well, you feel comfortable and you communicate Kinexit, there's really good business opportunities and we see so many professionals doing well. Now that we've partnered with the PJ of Holland, what we've done is that we've created a little bit of a unique setup. So one thing that we have done is that all members of the PJ of Holland that choose to use Kinexit and they want to get started will provide a complimentary license upgrade, which means that you will be paying, you're getting more than what you're paying for. So if you, for instance, use our starter, then you will only pay, be paying, you'll be getting a lot more months and a lot more features that what you would be paying otherwise. So we'll basically upgrade you depending on how you want to get set up. So it's a great deal, something that I think a lot of you will be uh, happy to use if you feel like Kinexit could be a good fit for your model. So just to break it down so it makes sense, uh, you know, different types of plans. So if we have our startup, you could either choose to do this monthly, you can choose to do this annually, get a little bit of a discount. You'll have 100 student months. That's roughly around nine uh, euros per student month. And our recommended sales price is around 15 euros that you would either package into your lesson or you would sell them separately. You can charge more, you can charge less. Um, it's really, really up to you. Uh, the starter, again, same piece, you would have 300 months. And here instead, your cost for your, your month would be six. And then the, the higher the license, then again, the lower the cost price per each student month. And remember, you will be getting a license upgrade because you're part of the PJ of Holland. And again, there's multiple ways of earning more. You can raise your value of your package. And most likely, like a lot of pros do, is they can raise the price. You can sell Goal Fitness Month separately, which is a very popular way to do it. And there's also ways to get kickback options as well. If you have any questions, I see that Martin, you had a question related to getting certified. Again, you know, really easy to do. First of all, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little form here to the chat uh, uh, here. Um, use the form. Just fill in your information. It's just a form of interest. Let us know if you're interested in learning more, if you're interested in like, hey, I would love to get set up, but how do I do it? We like to, you know, we've got a pretty good relationship with most of our professionals that we work with. So then we can have a sense of, okay, how big's your business? Where are the areas you're looking at? And then we'll guide you and then we'll set up a personal plan for you from there. Um, so feel free to use that, that form. Just let us know kind of if you're interested about Kinexit, if you want to learn more and so forth. No strings attached. It's just a sense of to maybe have a little bit of a guided tour and let us get to know you a little bit better. Um, and then when it comes to it, we've got that QR code that I mentioned. For you that want to kind of try Kinexit, uh, you can also use this link. And this link right here will provide a 30-day trial to Kinexit. It's our coach page. You'll have 10 months that you can use and share. You also have access to our knowledge center and then through our knowledge center, you can look at some tutorials and videos and kind of guide you through. But I would definitely encourage you to reach out to us. Love to have a personal meeting with all of you um, and, 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 and see if, you know, there could be a potential fit here where Connexit could provide value and, and, and help you. Um, if you have any more questions, 
anything related to this to, you know, Kinexit or Henrik's have had some issues right now with some technical discussions and or technical pieces there, but don't hesitate to email him. He's got his email there, Henrik at Kinexit.com. Um, we also have something that we released uh, this spring called our in-season toolkit. It's got lots of great you know, pieces here, packaging wise and things. If you're interested in grabbing a copy of our toolkit, it's like an ebook, uh, you know, drop a comment in the chat and, and, and I'll, I'll provide that link for you there as well. If you want to learn a little bit more. Any other questions, anything like that, uh, feel free to, you know, just use the chat, send any questions as you like. If you thought this, you know, feedback's also very much uh, appreciated what you thought of today. Uh, really happy that we're able to do these webinars together with the PJ of Holland, and hopefully there will be some more coming. If you feel like this is something that you thought was valuable, you thought was interesting, um, and you thought that, you know, it was something that we could do more of. Um, guys, thank you so much for taking the time. We really, really appreciate it. Um, hopefully we'll be able to set up some calls and some discussions and, and be able to, you know, get to know each other a little bit better. Um, if you don't even more questions, then I usually take that as everything's clear. Um, otherwise I want to say thank you so much for joining. Thanks for taking the time and, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you soon. Take care. Have a great day. And, uh, we'll talk a little bit later.